Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wave Slam reviewer, and I'm here to review Home Sweet Home Alone. The fifth Home Alone film that we have now, and this came out on Disney Plus for Disney Plus Day, and is actually an in-world spin-off sequel to the original film because there's definitely some very obvious references to the McAllister family. And this film focuses on a couple who are in desperate need of money, played by Ellie Kemper and Rob Delaney, and they realize that they have this really creepy doll that's worth a lot of money, and they think that this small British kid, Archie Yates' character, stole it, and he's stuck home alone just like, you know, the Kevin McAllister in the original film, because basically the same basic setup, and they try to steal it from his large mansion. And who do you root for? I think the idea is that everybody's sympathetic because because of idiotic confusion this kid thinks that they're trying to kidnap him and they're trying to get a very valuable heirloom back from a little jerk kid that stole it from them. But nobody's painted very likably and they're all just flanderized, ridiculous, over-the-top, obnoxious characters that you don't really want to root for. Like Ellie Kemper and Rob Delaney I've seen in things where they're really funny and enjoyable and charming. And here, they're just insufferable. Archie Yates was great in Jojo Rabbit. Here, he's just a little jerk. And you don't really want to root for anybody. And this plot is so overly complicated with so many subplots, so many story threads, that it's just so convoluted and absurd that it's hard to latch on to anything. And they're dropping all these significant hints and ideas throughout the film trying to build up to certain points in this film and it's just not working because you're stuck in these situations where it's like, well, that information is really important but you don't see it because you might have missed like one line. And why do you need to make this film that complicated? I appreciate that they try to do a different setup than just the regular Home Alone despite that they do rip off very obvious things from the original Home Alone. But the in the end, how it all resolves itself feels so just anticlimactic and didn't really mean anything and you're just sitting there like what was the point of this movie? What so this this family can connect with this random British kid that they met for like two seconds at an open house and this film wastes a lot of talent because like you even have like Kenan Thompson, Timothy Simons, like a, and a, Chris Parnell's randomly in it for a bit. And there's just a lot of talented performers here that are wasted in underwritten, absurd roles. And in the end, this film felt so much more mean-spirited and lacking of charm. You can tell this was not a John Hughes written film like the original film was. That's what made Home Alone work. There was a lot of craft that went into that screenplay because John Hughes knew how to write people. Here, it's just a bunch of caricatures who they try to get the setup and the pranks and everything, which takes way too long to get to anyway. There's long periods of time before there's even a kid home alone, before the family finds out that he's home alone. I was even checking the time, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And in the end, this is just a hollow, just lazy, poorly written spin off sequel that just feels like, hey, let's capitalize on Home Alone, but not really get what made Home Alone great. So in the end, wouldn't really recommend this one. You know, it is holiday related, so if you really want to watch something new for the holidays, it's there on Disney+. Plus. But those are my thoughts on Home Sweet Home Alone. Let me know what you think. Let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.